Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be something a little bit different. It's going to be more vlog style. There's just a few things on the vehicle and with my setup that I wanted to update you guys on. Uh, right now here in Washington State, we're between winter and spring. Spring has just arrived. Uh, obviously to many of you it looks like we're in the middle of summer, but around here it's uh, just getting started. So up in the mountains it's still winter, um, but because it's warmer down below, there's a transitionary period of kind of deep slushy wet snow that's very difficult to get through up to the nice powdery stuff. So vehicular camping at elevation is sort of hit or miss these days. So I've taken kind of a lull and I've got a project that I'm working on right now that I'll show you uh, towards the end of the video. But for now, I just kind of wanted to give you guys a, a quick run through and tour of what I've been up to with the vehicle and uh, my camping setup, which has been slowly evolving over time, over the years. And uh, more recently, I've worked on repackaging everything, rethinking everything uh, to try and maximize my efficiency so that I have just as, as good of a camp setup as I can in anticipation for the 2021 season. So let's uh, jump right in and I'll, I'll get started showing you what I've got going on. So right off the bat, I'll go ahead and show you this little aesthetic mod that I did. You know, some people are totally form over function and that's fine. Some people are all function over form. Uh, but me, I'm, you know, I think a lot, like a lot of people are a little bit of both. So uh, this first aesthetic mod that I, I did a little while back, it was just kind of a day trip thing, but I installed the Toyota Heritage Grill. So I'll show a picture here uh, of what it used to look like. Um, I didn't really take any pictures of the process, but this one is for a 2019 and earlier fifth gen 4Runner. So I did have to modify it a bit to fit uh, with the core support bit here that supports um, the front grille. So I did have to do a little bit of modification, but it saved me about 40 bucks over the 2020 and up grille. So anyway, that looks pretty good. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's get into the good stuff. So if you've seen any of my previous camping videos, you'll remember that I used to load up the roof with a bunch of totes. This has been a great option when you have a lot of stuff to bring with, you know, a larger family. For me, I didn't, don't have a larger family, but it's still me, my wife, baby, and dog. And uh, to clear the vehicle of some space, I put some stuff up on the roof. So I had four totes up there. Uh, it worked great. They weren't completely full, but it allowed me to get some of the stuff out of the cab, which was nice. Downsides, of course, are adding weight up on the roof and increased air drag from just the large objects. There's no getting around the gazelle tent. It's got to go up on the roof for me. Uh, so it's nice having the basket as an option for that. Uh, with everything off of the roof, it gives me room to stick my table, my little cheap Walmart foldout table up here, as well as my new Maxa traction boards. So it'll be nice to have those on the trail uh, just in case I need them. Although I'm sure they'll come in more handy in the winter. On the side here, I've got some quick fists set up. Uh, these typically hold my shovel when I'm out winter driving. Uh, in the summer, sometimes I'll bring the shovel depending on what I plan on doing. Other times I'll leave it at home. But in the back here, I have two that are close together and that allows me to carry my little small shovel if I just need like a little camp shovel or something. On this side of the vehicle, I have a cheap YesCom awning. Uh, I'll post up some pictures right now of what it looks like when it's fully deployed. I've made some good modifications to it. I had to flip the bag around and then on the inside of the bag I added some Velcro. Uh, but it's been, it's been quite reliable and I upgraded some of the joints of the awning itself with Iron Man 4x4 awning joints, which has really made it pretty much on par in my opinion with some of the more expensive brands. Uh, it's been a great affordable option for me. Uh, it's somebody who doesn't plan on using it a whole lot and had a hard time justifying a couple hundred bucks for it. This one was uh, 80 bucks, so. Okay, so this is the part I really wanted to show you guys. Go ahead and open this up. If you're wondering what this is, this is just a limiting strap. It keeps the door from opening up too far when I'm in the garage. But here it is. This is the new setup, the new plan. Let me get you in here. 
All right, so the new setup consists of multiple Plano totes. Uh, these Plano totes are something that I've been using a lot lately. And if you're familiar with Forerunners, you'll know that somebody figured out that three of these suckers can fit side by side, which is awesome. And it also means that you can fit another row of three on top. So using that, I packed in two by two, uh, and this basically holds all of our gear. On the side here, I've got enough room for my cooler and then our duffel for clothes and stuff. So let me kind of show you what we got going on. Everyone's favorite little slide out table. But yeah, now I don't have anything really fully strapped down, but I did show that you do have access to the OEM D rings here and here, and then in the back corners. And that allows me to strap everything, secure it down to the, the platform and just make sure that it won't go anywhere in case of an emergency. So. I'll get more into this here in a second once I unload the vehicle, but before we do that, let's go up to the front. In the back seat here, the vehicle has a 60-40 split. Now I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do this. I might do it like this. I might end up swapping the side that the baby's on, but whichever side I go with, having folded down, I'm thinking about removing these seats and building in a matching platform. That way I can maximize space. And then this is where the dog will sit. Over here, I think I'll put the water. I like to keep it low, low center of gravity. And then I have access to multiple points by the, where the seats mount that I could uh, potentially strap it down, which is nice. All right, so here's kind of the whole setup. I'm actually pretty proud of this, so I'll go through each tote and kind of show you what I keep in each one. I'm actually pretty surprised at how much space there is in some of these totes, especially the kitchen tote, um, considering you know what we used to bring. So I've really been able to shrink things down quite a bit. I guess we'll just go ahead and start right here. I've got my trusty fold-out Walmart cheapo table. This thing has been great at camp. Uh, shout out to the Rooted Progress. They just got one also that they've been using for uh, this year's camping, which is cool. This right here is just our clothing duffel. Usually this is as much as my wife and I need for at least three or so days. You know, we just bring the essentials. It packs down pretty small and it's come in handy. Here's my Coleman Yeti. It's obviously not a real Yeti. Uh, it's a piece of crap. This thing doesn't keep ice for uh, more than like six or seven hours on a hot day. So all of your stuff gets nasty. I did actually just get a new one. It's, uh, I think it's in town already, but I, it hasn't been delivered yet. Um, a buddy of mine got me a discount on Canyon coolers. So I'm really stoked to you know get to try out a, a higher quality cooler and uh, hopefully it'll serve us well. So you'll see that in future videos. I measured it out. It's about exactly the same size as this, so it'll fit with my setup. Okay, tote number one. So this tote actually stays with my vehicle most of the time, just when I'm daily driving. It's got all of my recovery gear in it. Um, so in this tote uh, bag right here, I've got my bungees, extra straps and stuff like that, just for tie downs. Um, I've got my ARB snatch strap and tow rope. Um, under here, I've got just a bag full of different shackles and stuff like that for different types of recoveries. Um, this bow saw was a present. Uh, it's really nice. It's super lightweight, folds down to nothing. Uh, when it's packed up like this, it's safe to handle, so you don't have to worry about cutting yourself or anything like that. Um, it's made out of aluminum, plastic, with a steel blade. I think I actually saw it on Living the Van Life at first, and that's kind of where I, I liked it. And then after searching around, I decided to go for it. Um, very high quality, made in America, Spring Creek Manufacturing, shout out, not sponsored, definitely not. Um, and then I've got my airing up stuff, so I've got my uh, Ironman Air Champ Pro, does great for airing up my tires, and then like a cheap deflator, X-Bull deflator thing, um, Ironman deflator, and a spare tarp. So that kind of just stays on the vehicle. This is like the heaviest uh, tote by far. Uh, in this tote, obviously, this is all of our sleeping gear. Um, right here, I've got my wife's mummy bag. It's a nice kind of fancy one. She got it at an REI garage sale, but it's nice because it packs down to nothing. Um, 
similar material. This is my son's sleeping bag. He's going to be two in October 2021. So it's just a nice small sleeping bag. It's actually made out of the same material as like a puffy jacket or something, which is cool. And then this is just one of those cheap uh, puffy blankets from Costco. And this giant Mamba Jamba, shout out Back Road Exploration. He's kind of dealing with the same thing. This is my ancient giant sleeping bag. It barely packs down. It sucks for heat. The zipper doesn't work. Um, so that's definitely going to need to get upgraded. Getting a new one of these would definitely save me a little bit of space in, the, in this tote, which would be nice. Maybe I'd be able to fit the pillows in there because shoo, over here, skipping the kitchen stuff, over here... I keep my pillows and just chairs and other stuff. If you're wondering what the heck is up with my pillows, uh, my mother-in-law made these for my wife when she was a kid just for fun. And long story short, it's ended up being my camp pillow. So yeah, that's the thing. Camp pillow case. So two pillows. Um, this is like a little tiny baby chair. And then I've got my two camp chairs right here. Um, some propane, my uh, mattress inflator, some random stuff. Let's see, I've got my little inflatable light. Um, this is a fan. If you have the, the buddy heater or something going, um, having one of these is nice. Or if it's the summer and it's really hot, having one of these can be nice to circulate air. I've got my little fire starter cheater and a knife. So I really cut down and some hand warmers. I really cut down on what I, what I take with me. good to go through your stuff every now and then okay so here's all the cooking gear i'm actually going to take it all out set it up on the table and i'll show you more in detail all right so this is another piece of the puzzle that i'm i'm pretty proud of it took a lot of thinking and and planning to make work so right off the bat we'll start with this this is just a a, a stanley um what's it called french press now, I'm not like a coffee snob or anything, but the size of the container, a 32 ounce stainless steel uh, kind of pot, if you will, um, is what I was going after. And this allows me to boil water and even cook like soups and stuff if I wanted to in a small form factor. It also doubles as a container for our coffee, which is cool. And I can even use the French press if I want. So I keep all of our coffee, tea, hot chocolate, stuff like that in, in a baggie and it goes in there nice little form factor and if i want i can use it to boil water okay in here i've got uh i, I put it into a tote just to kind of contain it but i've got things like my spatula camp knife i recently picked these up we'll see how they go um they are kind of pop apart Uh, mugs so that we can have mugs because that's kind of nice for coffee in the morning and hot drinks at night and stuff like that but I uh, didn't want them to take up space so I picked up these silicone ones that kind of compress and go together and uh, now if we use them cool if we don't use them well you know they don't take up a whole lot of room so I've got two of those some random sauces that little dry pack thing but this guy this was tricky so this is a 10 inch jet boil uh, pan. It's got a two inch lip on the side. Um, this was kind of a criteria for me and my wife because we like cooking meals with eggs and sausage and stuff like that. So it's nice having just a big pot that you can stir things around. Um, but before this, I was using a pan that was like an old kitchen pan um, and it didn't fold down or anything like this. So this was kind of a pricey piece. I think it was, I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, and then I had to buy the lid separate because they don't sell it with it. This is a lid for the jet boil pot and it's compatible with the, the pan. So I wanted a lid. Um, so once I got this, I was able to kind of add things inside of this to save space. So in here, you know, I keep our utensils. I'm missing one little pincer things. Again, these are some silicone bowls. If we end up needing bowls or something like that, got two of those. And then I bought some nine inch plates. It came in a pack of like 20. So I've got tons of them, but uh, you know, three, three ought to do it. And then they just kind of fit right in here into the, into the pan and I can use that. So I'm super excited at how well all of this stuff packs together, saves a ton of room. I mean, I think I shrunk it down by like maybe 
70%, like a lot. Okay, so moving on here. Let me make sure you can see. Okay, moving on. Now I have a Camp Chef propane two burner stove. Um, I'll show it here right now. You can see kind of what it looks like. It's very common, you see a lot of these often. What I found when I was out camping, definitely solo, but oftentimes even with family, is that I don't use both burners. And uh, the downside to that thing is it's large and it doesn't pack down at all. So I'm trying something new. Uh, this is something I've been interested in. Whoop, that's upside down. This is a butane single burner stove. So here you go, the fuel cell, the butane fuel cell sits right inside here. You lock it down with this lever. There's a million videos on there. This is a Gas One, oh gosh, G3700. I think it was like 30 bucks or 25 bucks or something on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. And there you have it. Like that's all, it's kind of all I think I'll need. Just like that. It saves a ton of space, packs up all together. Then I don't have to carry extra propane. Um, from what I've heard, one of these butane cylinders should last me a long time. So let me go ahead and get this thing all packed up. And last but not least, we've got the Gazelle Tent. I think there's a million videos out there on the Gazelle Tent. But if you look at my Mount St. Helens video I posted a long time ago before I really started making videos, you'll see, uh, you'll kind of get to see it in use. The little guy, the man, the myth, the legend himself. All right, so there you have it. I've made a mess. This is all of the gear. It packs down to almost nothing, which is great. And uh, I'm looking forward to trying it out, hopefully soon. So let me go ahead and get all this packed up. Yeah. High five. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so everything's all packed up. And as a little teaser for the next video probably, this is what I've been working on. So. Some of you may have guessed it immediately by seeing, but I'm building myself some sliders. Um, I've already got the rails that are gonna go under the pinch weld, fully length out, cut. They're uh, notched, so I'll be hammering this down, welding around it. That way it'll have a nice 45 degree chamfer. chamfer. Uh, these plates are gonna bolt up to the, the frame rails, and then these are the standoffs between the frame rails and the, uh, the long tubing. So. What I'm waiting on right now is uh, round tubing for the, the actual slider portion. Unfortunately, the metal shop that I've been going to, uh, it, they've been out of it for a little while. So I've got some on reserve. I'm gonna go pick it up on Monday and get back started. I'm really excited about this. Should be pretty cool. For anyone interested in doing their first fabrication project, I think this is a great one. I mean, it's really not that hard to do. Uh, you've got quite a bit of wiggle room to be custom and, and do your own thing. As long as you build them safe and strong, uh, you'll be okay. Uh, Dirt Lifestyle Nate, shout out. He uh, made a great DIY slider video for basically beginners. Um, it's, it's, I've been kind of partially following that, but also the nice thing about sliders is you can really kind of do your own thing as well. So yeah, keep your eye out for that. All right, you guys, that about wraps up this video. Uh, this is a setup that has taken me years to refine. Even before I made this channel, uh, you know, I was out camping with friends and family, and this is always something that I've wanted to do, is just continue to refine my camping setup. And uh, so hopefully, I, I showed you some cool tips, some tricks. Uh, maybe I allow you to skip a step or two in your planning setup and kind of think ahead to be more efficient. And uh, yeah. Spring is in the air, so hopefully I'll be out soon and I'll be camping, I'll have my new sliders and uh, we'll get some, some cool videos and have some, some good times. So, uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.